Hello everyone, welcome back for the second video tutorial for data structure. Coming exam also have um, the part that need you to understand legacy functions and big O notations. So for this video, I will spend some time talking about recursive function and how to come up with the coding pattern for big O notations. Now let's get started with recursive function. Now in the previous example, we show you already about many concepts, okay? You can see that one of the concepts that we show out is ability to find the total as well. Okay? What if I like to add things together recursively? Is it possible? Recursive function is this. Recursive function is something like this. Recursive function is the function that take input and then okay, um, recall itself with a new input uh, okay uh, driven by the first in the previous input and have exit condition so for example finding total number from 1 to 10 so find total number from 1 to 10 so this is what we do we say hey um, normally we can use for loop for doing this but we know that by doing for loop the cost of having this calculation is about o n okay so we do not gonna go with o n we do something with function call that we call just o one so in order to do this we say function okay um, sum and now the function will take the number that you want to make summation, let's say from 1 to 10, so let's say take n. And when you call it, you can call something like var result equal to sum of 10, and it's going to take summation from number 1 to this number. So in this case, we want to return the sum of n minus 1 plus the n itself. Look at this carefully. Okay, and we have also to implement the exit conditions. Exit condition happens because otherwise it's going to keep calling itself over and over again and forever. So in this case, we have to make sure we have exit condition. For example, so if we put uh, if n is equal equal to 1, then we return 1. Now look at this carefully. If I did not put n minus 1, I just put n, what happened? The first time is get call sum of 10. Number 10 will be assigned to n. And what happened? n is not equal to 1, so it's come down. And then return 10 plus this one. So it's going to be 10. By calling that one, is equivalent to equal to 10 plus sum of 10. What happened? It's called this function again, so later 10, um, the number 10 is reassigned to n. And this condition is still not true, so it's going to return this. So that means it's going to return um, that sum is equal to, in the second state, will be plus sum 10 plus sum of 10. And as you can see, without changing this value at all, it's going to keep doing this forever. This is not what we want. We want something like n minus 1 so that in the set, second subsequent call is going to be 10 plus sum of 9 because that n is already subtracted by 1. And this one will then sum call, a uh, sum of 9 will, will return 9 plus sum of 9 minus 1, which is sum of 8. And you do keep doing this, so it's going to be 9 plus sum, I'm oh sorry, plus 8 plus sum of 7. Okay, until last one. So you're going to get to C9 plus 8 plus 7 plus until last one, which is sum of 1. Now when you take 1 as the input for the last value here, this condition will be true. So that's why it will return 1. So this one will land you 1. So together you have summation of 55. Okay? So that's the recursive function. 
So I want you to apply this legacy function with some of the question that I asked right here. Okay, any one of these would be fine, like finding total summation of something using this recursive function. Okay, so that's recursive function. What else? Um, big O notation. So if I come here, and then if I ask, okay, can you provide me with the nested loop for um, complexity of O n? Then we know that O, oh, very easy. If you want to go with complexity of O n, we only need to have just one loop like this. Now, if you want O n square, that means like, let's say O n square, that means you need to have another loop in there, so that n square. If you go for n four, we know that O oh, you're gonna need to have two more loop inside. The one that is inside we call inner loop. Outside we call outer loop. So this is in the inner loop to this outer loop. Okay. All right. So that is nested loop. Data mapping and making decision. So if I would like to see O n of making decision and data mapping, we know that uh, by calling function and making decision this way is is going to be okay. For example, if I say var result um, list one dot map of um, map1 and then if result 0 um, greater than 10 then we do something you can see that this pattern consists of two asking asking for data mappings asking for making decision in parallel I'm sorry in sequence so in this case we know that this is going to be on and this is going to be on as well because it's a calling function, it's not looping. So your duty is to find data mapping, okay? That is um, equivalent to on, okay? Basically using for loop. And how to do that? Well, I keep this for your assignment. Since this is exam, you have a week to crack this problem. Data searching is simple. Let's say I want to search for number in the list, okay, with on with O n, then I can say for loop um, while i equal to 0 i less than um, list 1 dot length i plus plus and suppose I have the list of 1 equal to 1, 10, 20, 30 like this and I want to search for number 20 so I can say if list 1 i is equal equal to the number that I want you can also implement this into a function search All right and then put this inside the implementations sorry uh, put this inside this All right and take the list one as the input if this is the case you say we return the location of this element so return i so whenever you call this function, so you can call it right this position equal to search, okay, and then take twenty for example, then it should print out, it should print out um, positions that that is on the the third one, okay. So I think it's good idea to put one as well because it's starting from zero. So we want to know exact location. So starting from one, two, three. Like this. Now, if this is not the case, okay. So after the loop, um, I think this is the end of for loop. We do not have it here. So let's put it here and loop. So after the loop, still, if this condition is not true, that means it's not there at all. Like you're trying to find 200 and it's not there, then we return minus one, meaning it's not there. So as you can see, data searching with on is simple because we perform only for loop, one for loop. But if I ask you to do n power 2, okay, I might ask you to do something like, okay, if I have two lists, like um, 2, 20, and 30, and I want to know that is there any element of this that stay inside this list. So chances you're going to need to use double loop. Okay, and how to do this? Well, you can search online to see if I want to uh, search that how many elements in this list 
that also are um, a member for the second list. One more time, if you want to do O n square, then the question might be, how many elements in this list are there in the second list? Okay, so that's the theme for um, you know searching for the internet and see if they have any implementation for supporting this. I mean, if it it was like just O n, we know that just this is good enough. Okay, but it's happened to see if I'm asking for O n's power two. Scenario would be finding an element that might be exit in another list. Okay, so that's the deal. And I hope that my video tutorial should be able to uh, prepare you a bit about your upcoming exam. And um, still, I don't think it's the complete information. So that's why I ask you to join the online session on Saturdays starting from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. If, if you can come, please welcome to join, okay? Um, about like one hour before we start the conversation, I will send out my any desk ID so that you can join force. Okay, thank you for watching.